HRI Awards, but not as you know it. 2020 simply wouldn't have it any other way. We'll meet again, as the song says, but for now, whether you're joining us on HRI.ie or on Racing TV in Ireland, in Britain or around the world, you're very welcome. This has been a difficult year for so many people, not least those who have lost loved ones. As is traditional, we begin with a moment of reflection for those who left us in 2020. Well, the action on the track took a brief COVID-enforced break in April and May. But both before and after, we retreated to some incredible moments. With the exception of the ride of the year, which is decided by a public vote, the Horse Racing Ireland Awards are selected by the racing media in Ireland. And with some big weekends to come and some stunning racing fresh in the memory, how better to get things rolling than with the National Hunt Award? And the nominees are... Rachel Blackmore. Henry de Bromhead. Gordon Elliott. Willie Mullins and Paul Townend. And the winner is Rachel Blackmore. Yes, that's Rachel's second successive year to take the National Hunt Award after a truncated season in which she amassed 61 winners in Ireland, not to forget that highly memorable victory aboard Honeysuckle in the Mare's Hurdle at Cheltenham. And we caught up with the leading rider who sent us this message. Hello everyone. 
I'm absolutely thrilled to receive this award. It's an absolute honour to even be included on the list of names. I did think when the list came out, looking at it, that Paul might be the winner, but I'm absolutely honoured and thrilled to have been chosen um, this year. It's been a fantastic year. I've had some, some fantastic days. Obviously, none of us would have happened without the backing of Henry de Bromhead and his team down in Knockeen, so a massive thanks to them. I would just like to wish everyone a very happy Christmas and hopefully we'll all be watching in on some great racing. Well done once again to Rachel Blackmore. We'll stay with National Hunt and move on to the National Hunt Achievement Award, a category in which the nominees are Charles Burns, Patrick Mullins, Dara O'Keefe, and Maxine and Eugene O'Sullivan. And rather than me announcing the winner in the usual manner, let's join Jane Mangan in the field and see who she's about to surprise. Eugene, Maxine O'Sullivan and Rolo. 29 years on from Lovely Citizen in 91. Eugene, did you ever think that was going to happen again? Never thought it was going to happen, but I knew I had time in my side. That um, I was very young when we won it in 91. And if we were going to stay in the game, we would have another chance of, of getting at it. But I was beginning to lose faith. It took so long. It took 30 years is a long time. time. And Maxine, like you grew up with that on the mantelpiece, with those stories, but you were too young to really remember it. What did it mean to you to, to bring that home to Lumbardstown again? I wasn't born when, when Lovely Citizen won, but I always remember how special it was for my family uh, growing up. It was always, even when I got older, it was always, it was still spoken about and it was always something I aspired to do. And um, like, it was, yeah, it was really amazing. Um, we talk about it being a dream and it, what we aim for, but it really, really is unbelievable for us as a family to do it again and for me to do it again. I, I didn't think I'd ever do it. I dream of doing it, but I didn't think it would happen. But it really was really special, yeah. yeah it was really for special for us watching it. And we haven't had the opportunity to really celebrate it yet because of circumstances, but I know you think I'm here to film a feature for Racing TV on the highlights of the year, but I'm actually here to give you a gift as well. So Eugene, there's actually a bag behind you. If you wouldn't mind turning around and opening that bag, please. <laughs> Fall off the bin. Because it has been an unusual year, we can't all gather in a ballroom and celebrate the exploits of the year past, but this is the Special Achievement Award from Horse Racing Ireland. You have won because you've given so many people so much hope and your story has been so fantastic. And when you came back from March, it was, it was a different world you came home to, but you left with a dream and you made it reality. So congratulations. How does it feel? <laughs> I'm, I was overwhelmed on the day. <laughs> and I'm overwhelmed now. It's something I aspire to doing. And I see these awards. And um, this is a big family operation. There's, my mother is very active in it. Um, my family were always very supportive and very active. It isn't me. It's, it's an operation. And sometimes we think we're pulling the devil by the tail or pulling the dog by the tail, trying to, with horses getting hurt and with things going wrong. But with, um, you know, when it comes right like this, you only get the one chance to say it came right and the work is after paying off. And this means a lot to me and it means a lot to my family. Thank and you. Maxine? Yeah, massive surprise. <laughs> um, it is amazing. Um, can't believe we won this. Like so many, so many other great achievements in the year, this is just so special. I can't believe it means that that it means so much to us. Like I can't. I'm. I was always overwhelmed how how much other other people thought that it was special too. So this is just amazing. I'm delighted for you, Dad, and uh, for I'm us and for everyone you. here, for our whole team. As Dad said, our family, but. The lads in the yard and our, our staff and our friends and everyone, like, it's just, this is brilliant. This is amazing. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, it means an awful lot. <laughs> well, it meant so much to so many people. And as the horses come back in from the gallops here, yeah. in what is a very natural environment, this is fox hunter country. This is 29 it. years on from lovely citizen and your brother William Maxine brought it home and there was no more deserving winner in 2020. Thanks so much, Jane. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Jane. Thank you. Wonderful stuff there from Eugene and Maxine O'Sullivan and congratulations to them on their National Hunt Achievement Award. Now to the Point to Point Award. Irish Point to Point horses had a stunning season on the track in 2019 stroke 20 and that is reflected in the strong shortlist for the Point to Point Award in which the nominees are Colin Bow, Rob James Mark O'Hare and Barry O'Neill and the winner is for the second successive year Colin Bow. well done to Colin and I'm delighted to say we're joined now by our winner from his Kiltilly base down in County Wexford Colin great to see you congratulations yeah Gary thank you very much I wasn't expecting but it's Yes, delight, delight, delight to have the win for the second year in a row. I must say it's terrific to see you up and about and looking so well. Not everybody will be aware, but you've been having a pretty tough old time of things in the last couple of months. Just how big a lift has news of this award given you? I tell you, it's, it's, it's great for any award and it's a very prestigious, prestigious award. I'm delighted to win it. Um, I was out of action maybe for a couple of months, but the lads here did a great job. We had, I think we had more winners than actually when I was with and I was here, so fair play to the boys. And I'm delighted, delighted to win this award. And Colin, we're watching some of the incredible talent that has gone through your hands over the years. Horses like Envoy Alain, Sam Crow and Fernie Hollow. Envoy Alain, I guess, is the horse that everybody is talking about at the moment. Just tell us what you've made of his two starts over fences so far. Do you think he's going to go all the way? Oh, Gary, definitely, Gary. He, he, he's very, very good. He, he's, he's, he's quick in front. He, he's nimble, long, short. He gets away from the back of the fence quick. He, he, has, he has a turn. He, he has speed. Um, he, Gary, to be honest, he looks like he looks like to really live. Good and ground, winter ground, two, two and a half. He just looks to be the real live. In this game, Colin, you know as well as anyone, everyone's always looking for the next champion. Have you seen anything in your current crop down there that you think might be a household name in a couple of years' time? Gary, yeah, they don't have names yet. We have probably been 50 and 55 uh, trials here. We seem to have, I took it, we bought for maybe eight, eight or ten walk in the parks. They seem to be they seem to be doing their job well. We have a few soldier fortunes, Milan's. We definitely have we definitely have a nice bunch here for the season going forward. Yeah. Good man. Well, Colin, I know I speak for everybody in Irish racing, and I wish you the very best and offer congratulations once again on a well deserved award for the second year running. Have a great Christmas, and hopefully we'll catch up soon. Gary, thank you very much. Thank you. Colin Bow there. Now it's time for the flat award. What a season it was for Irish flat trainers and jockeys. Nine different trainers landed Group 1 victories this year and success all over the world. So the nominees are... Colin Keane Ger Lyons Johnny Murta Aidan O'Brien and Joseph O'Brien And the winner is Colin Keane. What a season for Colin. Four Group 1 victories, two for his boss, Ger Lyons, in the Irish 2000 Guineas and the Irish Oaks, one for Dermot Weld on Tarnawa at the Breeders' Cup and a matron stakes on Champers Elise for Johnny Murta. And I'm delighted to say that Colin joins me now. Colin, congratulations. A second Horse Racing Ireland award, yet another trophy in what has been a pretty awesome 2020 for you. Can you believe just quite how well things have gone this year? No, um, I'd just like to firstly thank everyone who voted for me for the HRI Flat Award. Uh, it's another brilliant achievement for an unremarkable year we're after having. If you said that we'd have this sort of year at the start of the year, I'd probably have laughed at you. So no, it's, it's just gone from strength to strength and we're very grateful. And Colin, it feels like a long time ago, but that Irish 2000 Guineas win on Siskin really does <coughs> appear to be the pivotal moment, the launch pad, if you like, for both yourself and Ger Lyons. Is that the way you look back on it now, some six months later? Yeah, I think so. Um, it was obviously a very, we'll say, high-pressure day for us. We had, 
because he was such a good two-year-old. Um, it was his first time stepping up to a mile and uh, our first real classic contender. And for him to to go and sorry, for him to go and do the business for us, it was a uh, no, it was unbelievable. It's good to see that you've got an audience there. And tell us about the battle yeah. for the Jockeys' Championship as well. Yourself and Shane Foley provided great entertainment there for a while, and I know Shane's a good pal of yours, but to get the upper hand laid on after, let's face it, giving away a huge head start when you went to Goodwood to ride in the Sussex Stakes must have been some thrill. And then on your final ride, to get the 100 up as well. Yeah, no, it was, uh, it was as I said, it was a year I will remember for a very long time because we kind of roll off the championship and we had to sacrifice our two weeks. But thankfully when we, we came back, uh, just winners came after each other and we had a, the last couple of months of the season, we had a lot of winners. Uh, my agent done a very good job for, for me and the boss of the horse in great order. So look, I wouldn't be out here, I wouldn't be here with either of them. So I'm very grateful for both of them then. And I know from talking to you in the past, you're always looking to build on what you've done in, in the season the following year. What sort of ambitions or targets have you set yourself for 2021? I guess you're hoping to do a bit more travel if you're able. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to do a bit more traveling and riding in them big races. Uh, there's not a feeling like it. Whether it's, well, especially when you win, there's not a feeling like it. And obviously, I'd, I'd love to be champion jockey again, but and hopefully beat this year's tally or, or get very close to it. Well, as I say, Colin, it was some year. It'll be hard to top, but I'm sure no better man for the job. Good luck for 2021. In the meantime, have a great Christmas and give our regards to all the team there. Thanks, Gary. Same to you. Colin Keane there. Now it's time for the Flat Achievement Award, a category packed with some serious achievement in 2020. This year, the nominees are... Kieran Cotter. Shamey Heffernan, Emmett McNamara, Tony Mullins, Donica O'Brien, and Dermot Weld. And we're going to rejoin Jane, who's up to her old tricks. I'm here at Watry Stud, the home of Tony Mullins and a certain Princess Zoe. Now, Tony thinks I'm here to record an end of season highlight reel as such, obviously taking in his story of Princess Zoe, but little does he know that Paddy Kyo, the Grey Mare's owner, is en route with the HRI Flat Achievement Award. In the middle of our interview, we plan on surprising Tony with giving him his award for what has been a wonderful story. What could go wrong? Tony Mullins, at the end of every year, we get a little little time to reflect on the year that has been and many people will have wanted to erase 2020 from their memory never happened but not tony mullins what a summer you've had yeah it all is uh, around one mayor i mean it, our dream came through everybody dreams of buying a cheap horse and you know winning a few races with it and suddenly when we started winning the next thing we realized we had a real race horse the journey from there was just, just a whirlwind. Princess Zoe, two wins from 15 starts. What was the draw? Well, we felt that um, she was running over a mile and a quarter mostly, mile and one, mile and a quarter. And the way she was finishing, we felt that upper in distance and you're going to have a better mare. So we have one eye on maybe having a jumper. So that was uh, the way it started. Then when she came and started working so well, and we knew we had a good one. A uh, good bit before we ran her, we knew, didn't quite know where she was going to end up, but we knew we had a, a, a very capable handicapper. And we had her ready to run in um, Navan in March. And it was the first meeting that was closed down. Uh, so the next thing we were left, you know, doing nothing. Oh, oh, we have Paddy, an oh, interruption Paddy. here now. It's Christmas. It's for me, but I think it's for you. It's a box of money, oh is it? Oh, my God. Money in it, I think, yeah. <laughs> have, well, oh you God. have to open it now. The man is after bringing you a present. <laughs> my God. What is Tony Mullins, oh. well done. You have one? won the Horse Racing Ireland Flat Achievement Award oh, oh. <laughs> for your exploits with the wonderful Princess Zoe. For giving us all hope that it can be done, you don't need mega bucks. 
You just need raw talent yeah. and you have managed that and honed that in the space of 12 months from your purchase from Germany in October to winning a Group 1 with a mare originally rated 64 mm. and taking to her 110. Well done. Yeah, it's... I'm holding back tears. <laughs> Paddy, thank you so much for being a perfect accomplice in our little plan here. Tell me, Tony has been the, the manager, he's been the Jose Mourinho, you've been the Roman Abramovich of Princess Zoe. What's the journey been like? I'm sure it's unbelievable. Like she ran seven times and she won five and probably a little bit unlucky in the other two. I never thought at the start of the year that I'd have six winners, you know, so it was a great year and we're, look, we're really looking forward to next year. It's dreams, it's the stuff of yeah, dreams. It's a dream come true, yeah. And what yeah. about this man's part in the story? He's not ah, missed sure. a beat. It was unbelievable like, to, to, to get a filly rated 64 and to win all those races with her. Like, it, was, it was a great training feat and you know, fair play to him. So Tony, we've come to the end of the year and you are finally holding a, another trophy. Yeah. It's a nice way to cap it all off. Yeah, it, it, this is a huge surprise, I'm shaking. It's, you know, this is what we do it for, to, to um, get horses that are recognised like this. And it's so lovely that, you know, the public have latched on to her as well. We love that, because well, that's what we do it for. Your story's been wonderful for everybody, and I hope it's just the beginning. Thank you so much for bringing us down here today, for bringing us on your journey, and well done for winning the Flat Achievement Award from Horse Racing Ireland. Thank you. <laughs> what a story, and a well-deserved award for Tony Mullins there. Tony and Princess Zoe really were an integral part of the summer of 2020. Next up is the Emerging Talent Award, a category which seeks to shine a light on Irish racing's bright, young, up-and-coming talents. This year, the nominees are Dylan Brown McMonagall, Shane Cross, Sean O'Keefe, Gavin Ryan, and Joey Sheridan. Time to find out this year's winner. Well, I can tell you he's a big Tipperary supporter, so who better to knock on his door with the good news than All Ireland hurling winning manager and racing fan Liam Sheedy? Gavin about. Oh Jesus, Liam. <laughs> How, how's things? How are you, Gavin? How are things? Sure, I'm not a lot of things. Good, good, good. Great. I'm just here to present you with the award for the Emerging Talent Award from Horse Race in Ireland. So I just want to say a massive well done. You might come out and have a quick chat. That's it's lovely. Okay. Thanks, William. Lovely. Thank you. Well done. Yeah, 51 winners, great season for you. Great season, yeah, I know, yeah. I had a great season, but great support. Um, plenty of trainers used me this year. And, um, I, I obviously had a lot of connections that I've built up over the last few years who, yeah. who continued to support me, but as well as that, I got a lot of new ones. And um, my agent, Dave Keener, had done a great job. But no, all in all, it's, it's been a super season. Um, and obviously, a new link up with Donegal O'Brien this year. Um, it, it, it proved to be a very successful one, so um, I'm over the moon. Of the 51, what's your, is there any standout? They're all good, but and a special there, one. There, there was a plenty of special moments this year, thank God. I, I, I was lucky enough that um, I had a lot of big days and, and good days, but um, if I was to pick one, it would probably be Shale, um, yeah, my first Dunica's group horse. winner. Um, for obviously Dunica and the, the Coolmore team, Michael Tabor, Derek Smith, um, and, and, and Mr. John Magner. So, um, no, it was an excellent year, but if I was to pick one highlight, it would probably be her. So you played a bit of hurling when you were young. Did you, did someone said you were down in the field for the, a bit of the pad, pandemic as well, were you? I was, yeah. Um, oh, I, I, had to, I had to keep my, my, my mind occupied with something. So, um, so you know yourself, when you, when you grow up in tip, hurling's everything, I suppose. Yeah. Um, first sp sport you play is hurling, and you play it all the way through school and whatever. And um, I went to school in Skullron and Kilnall, so um, they, they have a, they have a great programme there um, for hurling scholarships. So um, I was lucky enough to be in that for the first three years of, of, of school. So 
Um, Ireland played a, a, a big part in, in, um, in, in my life and it ha has done for most of the lads in the local community. So, um, no, it, it's great and we still follow to this day. Yeah. Um, my brother still plays a, a, a bit, um, club hurling and, and whatnot. So, um, obviously, I didn't really have much size or, or yeah. physique for it, but um, everyone has a hurling slitter and tip, so um, yeah. it, it's always something there to, to do. I would have had you down as an nippy corner forward, but you tell me that wing back is the is the favourite position. Yeah, like wing, facing the ball. Yeah, wing back was my position. Um, I don't know if that was probably because I had I had plenty of fitness um, <laughs> from the race and whatnot, but um, I, I I think now. I would probably, if I was playing Corn Ford, would have been a bit, a bit too close to the goal. Now I'd say my, my shoot, my shooting, my shooting practice probably wasn't the best. So um, no, wing back. I played wing back for, for most of most of um, my, my hurling days. So um, yeah. yeah. But I guess that you know the hurling and the, I suppose the sport in general. It's great to get your endurance up and the physical fitness up. I suppose as a jockey, you do need to have that that physical strength to get you over the line from time to time. So it probably was a good building block in terms of what you went on to achieve as a jockey so far. Of course it was, and then um, obviously the, the competitive um, side of things as well. It, it, there's no point in taking part if you don't want to win, um, and I suppose that's something um, coming from a, a good club like Kilnall and, and that. Winning was everything, like, um, and and so it, it teaches about the competitive as, a, aspect of, of sports, um, and obviously how to how, how to keep a level head and whatnot. Because you know yourself, you, you do something wrong in the field, yeah. you, 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 you're, you're, you're sent to the sideline. Um, so it's all about keeping a level head in, in sports um, and and getting the best results possible. Yeah, I know. And listen, it's fantastic, I suppose, to see where you've gone, and I suppose it's great to see people taking up at the other sport but to see the way you've progressed in racing and I suppose from a temporary perspective really proud of you as I said when I'm not on the sideline there's nothing I enjoy better than a day at the races so I, you know I'm looking forward to seeing your growth over the coming years and the very best of luck as I said we're all very proud of Tipperary what you're doing well done thanks for your name. great stuff there and congratulations to Gavin on a terrific year now the ride of the year category, which sees six rides from 2020, three over the jumps and three on the flat, selected by our expert Fran Berry, with the shortlist then put to a public vote to select the winner. Let's have a look at Fran's Super Six. Rachel Blackmore. Shaney Heffernan. Colin Keane. Connor Maxwell. Gavin Ryan and Paul Townend. And the winner is... Gavin Ryan. So it's a second HRI Award 2020 for Gavin, capping an incredible season. Here's Fran to talk us through what makes this year's Ride of the Year, Gavin Ryan on Salt and Stall, so good. Here's Gavin Ryan, a five pound claimer at the time, riding Salt and Stall in the Galway Mile. This horse was drawn wide in Stall 12 of 18 runners. Gavin didn't panic, he sat last on the rail, took all the chances, got the splits, bided his time, but he had three lengths to make up on the front running Nord, and he got there in the very last stride. Finally judged ride, brave for a five pound claimer, it doesn't get any better. coming like an express train. Congratulations again to Gavin. Now it's time for the headline award, the Horse Racing Ireland Horse of the Year. It wasn't easy to narrow it down to five, but the nominees for this award are Album Photo Envoy Alain Honeysuckle Love and Magical And the winner is Album Photo we didn't get to see much of him in 2020, but when we did, once again, he was brilliant. He made his seasonal debut, as is now traditional, in the Savile's Chase at Tremor, before succeeding where so many great horses before him have failed in winning back-to-back -back Cheltenham Gold Cups. And I'm delighted to be joined now by the proud owner of our winner, Mari Donnelly. Mari, thanks so much for joining us and congratulations. Just if you don't mind, tell us how big a thrill you've had from owning this horse and seeing what he's done over the last couple of years. Oh, I mean, it's impossible to express, but I mean, the thrill really goes to uh, Willie and to Paul and to Paul Roach and, you know, Willie and Jackie and all of the team there because they're the ones who um, look after Album and, and bring him to the, these incredible wins. Um, as you can see, the, the two gold cups behind me, 
and now the new trophy. So all credit due to, um, to them, really. And of course, to be the first horse to win for Willy, to win the Gold Cup, um, it's simply fantastic. A huge thrill for all concerned. Mari, if you don't mind, take us back to that special day in March. What are your memories of the day? Is it still pretty vivid in your mind or perhaps a bit of a blur? Oh, no, it's completely vivid. I couldn't watch the race, actually. For some reason, I was so nervous. And we watched it on the stand with everybody else. And I was sort of facing the wall rather than looking at the race. Um, it really meant so much to do my husband, who, you know, we'd been together for 50 years and I had never realised that his great ambition was to own a champion horse. And he did it um, with the help of Willie and Paul. And then when I, David Casey helped me lead the horse in, uh, which was a little terrifying because, um, you know, the horse is very obviously excited. And um, uh, so when Paul jumped off the horse, he, he just said, um, well, I have no idea what expletive happened out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he was so happy. It was really wonderful for himself and Willie who were just over the moon. So for all of them who had been so involved in album, it was just the best. And wonderful to witness that. Tremendous. And Mari, it's become a tried and trusted formula over the last couple of years. One run at Tremor on New Year's Day, on to Cheltenham again, and I'm sure that's the plan. Do you guys feel any pressure attached at all as he now tries to emulate the likes of Arkell and Best Mate by winning three in a row, or is it just a case of enjoying the ride? Oh, I certainly don't feel any pressure at all. I mean, obviously, it would be extraordinary if he did it three times in a row. We would love to get to Tremor this year because we weren't there either the past two years. But I doubt we'll make it this year with this, the quarantine and all of that. But And also, everybody's very superstitious in our house. So um, they kind of think, no, nah, if we go to Tremor, you know, you might just jinx it a little bit. So perhaps we'll just... Um, Stick with the formula, as Willie says. I remember last year I, said, I, I did text him and said, Willie, please wear the lucky coat. <laughs> so he did, and we won again. So Willie, get the brown coat out again next year, please. I'm sure he'll be listening to this. Murray, it's fantastic to catch up with you and see those two Gold Cups resting proudly there behind you, along with the Horse of the Year trophy. Really appreciate your time. Regards to Joe and the family. Have a great Christmas. We'll catch up soon. Thank you very much, and thank you, everybody. Thank you. Mari Donnelly there, owner of Album Photo, the Horse of the Year for 2020. And we look forward to seeing him return to action at Tremor in less than three weeks' time. Now it's time for the Contribution to the Industry Award, in recognition of those who have left a lasting imprint on the racing landscape in Ireland. Here's Brian Kavanagh, Chief Executive of Horse Racing Ireland, to announce this year's award recipient. Thanks very much, Gary. We come to one of the highlights of the evening now, which is the Contribution to the Industry Award. This award is uh, decided each year by the selection committee, not by popular vote. And it's awarded every year to someone who over a long period of years has made an outstanding contribution to the industry in Ireland. This year, there really could only be one winner of this award. And I'm pleased to say that, that, that the 2020 winner of the Contribution to the Industry Award for Horse Racing Ireland is John Ox, the recently retired trainer. Uh, John has been a legend of Irish racing over a number of years. Uh, his achievements on the track since he started training in 1979 are extraordinary. 33 Grade 1 winners worldwide with some of the most wonderful horses we'll ever see. See the Stars, Alamshar, Sindar, Ridgewood Pearl, just to name a few. Uh, John has also made a fantastic contribution to our industry in many other ways. He's served on numerous boards. I've worked with him on the board of Leopardstown. He's been on the board of the National Stud. Uh, very heavily involved with the Racing Apprentice Centre in Kildare, led the Irish Trainers Association for a number of years, and always provided excellent advice, excellent support, and common sense. John is one of the best known figures in Irish racing. His horses have always been recognised for their quality on the track and for their appearance and, and the way they've been looked after. John has had excellent staff over the years, and it's very significant that those staff have always stayed in Corrobeg for a long time. I'm delighted that we're making this award to John, uh, who is, is a naturally modest man, but in some small way, I hope we can recognise the enormous contribution and the enormous debt of gratitude which we owe him. In congratulating John, I should also mention his wife, Katrina, and his family, who have always been supporting him in the training and in the, in the venture at Curra Beg. Uh, so without any further ado, I'd like to hand over to John and 
uh, congratulate him on the award. Thanks, Brian. We'll be hearing from John in just a moment. But before that, we're going to take a quick look at a career packed with success at the highest level. In line, ready to go in the mile. And they're off. On the outside, Redwood Pearl giving their all. And Redwood Pearl lengthening her long and powerful strides to go on to a victory here. She's a two-length winner. It's Zaki reeled in by Cinder. Superstar Leo, Amit Sampo, Superstar Leo Le Douze, et deuxième, et pour la... As they run up towards the line, it's Alam Shard who's going to win the derby for John Merton and John Ox. As a more driven out, will win the St. James's Palace for Michael Kinnan and John Ox. See the stars and Mick Kinnan ranging up on the near side, and see the stars, they've come to see a star, and it's see the stars who hits the front for Michael Kinnan and John Ox. And racing up towards the finish, the undisputed champion. See the stars is running away. He's going to score by two and a half lengths. See the stars racing away. Perfection in equine form. A horse of a lifetime. He's just going to go on and win the yard by two lengths. He's not a man who jumps and shouts and gets excited, but my word, this means the world. This horse means the world. It's probably the best training performance ever. To keep this horse on the go all year, he said it's very hard for three-year-olds from the spring right up until now to keep him sweet and happy. Definitely. And he's done a marvellous job. And that is a very proud man. So many great memories there, I'm sure you'll agree. And John, firstly, thanks for joining us. And many congratulations on this richly deserved award. When you look back at some of those wonderful races and horses, does that give you a real sense of perspective regarding what you achieved in your training career? Well, it's uh, yeah, well, it does. I suppose it's nice to look back. Um, I, I, I don't often look back at old films, but I've been, uh, uh, you know, a few of them have been played a bit recently, and it is it is nice to look back. I mean, they were all great horses. We were fortunate to have them. And uh, it was great that uh, they were able to keep winning. Uh, you know, a lot of them ran up a bit of a sequence, which was great uh, to see them do. And uh, we're quite proud of it when we suppose when we think about it. But um, um, you know, we were we were fortunate to have such nice horses, such good horses, and and uh, for everything to work out so well. And John, I think it's fair to say Irish racing has changed a fair bit over the course of your long period with a licence. Do you feel that it's been an advantage to oversee all those developments from the ground? Do you feel the sport's in a better place now than maybe when you started out? Well, I think there's a lot that's uh, improved uh, since since I started out, certainly. Uh, you know, we've got a new structure now. We've uh, uh, Irish racing is very well run. Uh, we've got, you know, the right type of structure in place when i started off we had two uh two bodies running racing with the racing board uh, uh who were in charge of you know the betting revenue and uh distributing the funds and the turf club who were running the show uh, but neither of them had enough money um and uh, when i was chairman of the trainers association a long time ago you'd go to the racing board with some problem and they'd tell you well that's really for the turf club and then you go back to the turf club and they'd tell you that was the racing board uh, they, their job so you couldn't really get anywhere and there was just a shortage of money but now uh, with the structure that Irish racing has and uh, it has the confidence of government uh, and the establishment of the horse horse uh, race horse and, and greyhound fund uh, racing is pretty well you know properly funded now uh, there, of course, there's never enough money, but, you know, we're a lot better off than we were and things can get done. And uh, there have been great improvements because of that in the last uh, 25 years. We must talk about See the Stars, John. Your association with him, one of the sport's true greats, has ensured that the name John Ox is going to be remembered for many years to come. If I had to ask you to maybe single out one of those wonderful victories during his illustrious career, which one would it be? Would it be the Arc de Triomphe where he brought the curtain down in such spectacular fashion? 
Well, I suppose it has to be. I mean, they were all important races, every single one of them, because if he if he was going to establish himself as one of the greats, he had to run up a sequence of big wins uh, to match to match all the other great horses of the you know the last hundred years, if you like. And uh, so every single one of them was important, and it's hard to put one above the other. But um, to win the last one and not sort of stumble at the last hurdle was, you know, it was a bit nerve wracking uh, coming up to it. And, uh, you know, we all knew he was the best horse and you'd be inclined to think, you know, sure he can't get beaten, you know, but of course they can always get beaten. Things can always go wrong. You never you never know what's going to happen. It's a horse race. Anything can happen. So uh, for him to come through and win spectacularly like he did and, uh, you know, finish, finish with the Arc de Triumph because I'm old enough to remember Nijinsky, who was, you know, a hero of mine and a great horse, but he got beaten in the arc, uh, lost his unbeaten record. So I didn't want that to happen. So uh, winning the arc, yeah, was a, was a big relief and uh, uh, it, it crowned his career. And John, I know it's not long since you made the announcement and the flat season came to a close, but what are the early throws of retirement like? Has it sunk in yet, really, that you... Won't be training racehorses anymore. Ah, well, yes, it has. Yeah, well, <laughs> yes, well, we've been thinking about it for a while, and uh, so it's no big shock to us. Um, and uh, yeah, no, it's it's well sunk in, all right. But we're still quite busy. It's um, the yard is is quiet. Of course, it slows, but uh, you know the business takes a while to wind down. Uh, all the office work and all that. It's a bit like a ship, you know. It's sort of comes comes to a halt slowly so we're still very busy um but um you know we'll we'll um life will change a bit now in the next couple of months i suppose and uh, uh i think we're looking forward to it terrific well john thank you so much for taking time out to join us on the program this afternoon it's been a wonderful career and heartiest congratulations on your hri contribution to the industry award season's greetings to you and the family as well but thank you very much, Gary, and thank you to HRI. I have the, the award here, and it's very nice, so it's greatly appreciated by us, and uh, thank you very much. And so to our final award, the Irish Racing Hero Award. A relatively new arrival to the roster, this award has honoured Pat Smullen, Ruby Walsh, Nina Carberry, and Katie Walsh. The bar is high, but this year's winner more than meets the mark. It's legendary jockey Barry Geraghty who retired this year after decades at the very top. Now, we've done our best to keep this a secret from Barry, who is joining me on the premise of talking to me about his book. So let's see what happens. Barry, great to see you. We'll come to your book in just a second. But first, we need to know, how is retirement treating you? It's good, Gary. Um, I've been kept busy through the autumn with some young pint of pointers and spending time at home with Paul and the kids. Um, and writing a bit of work for Gordon lately and a few of his stars, which is nice. But no, it's been good. Um, I'm probably sits more comfortably with me than I expected. Um, you know, it's been a busy, a busy 24 years and it's it's hectic. But um, I'm enjoying just the, the steadier pace. Good man. Now tell us about this book of yours, True Colours, released just in time for the all-important Christmas market. Was it an enjoyable experience for you to write this? It was an experience um, and it, it was enjoyable. It was, you know, when you start delving back into the memories and, and what happened over the years. One sec. Whoa. Barry's got God, a few thank visitors. Thank you very much. Whoa. I'm just surprised. Oh, thank you. It's time for that us to come clean, Barry. Didn't... We didn't get you on to talk about your book, just to talk about your book. Congratulations. Can you read the inscription? Oh, that is. Oh, I think it's upside down. Oh, here we go. Irish Racing Hero. My God, thank you very much. That Irish is... Racing Hero and, uh... 2020. That is you. Congratulations. We'll give you a minute there just to compose yourself while we take a quick look at the journey to this point. <laughs> Garrity in the saddle. He's had such a sensational winter and now it's capped with victory in the Martel Cognac Grand National. Monty's Pass is the winner.
and say so you're done. They're inside the last hundred yards and it's shut the front door. It's going to give Barry Garrity and J.P. McManus the boy in sports national. Garrity goes for Mouver there. Mellon is finding plenty. They race up towards the line, head to head, toe to toe, and Mouver there just retains his title. Eppertult is in front, and she's not for catching. Driven out by Barry Garrity. It's a birthday winner for J.P. McManus as Eppertult shakes the champion hurdle. Yes, yeah, terrific stuff. And let's go back to Barry, who, as you can see, has been joined by wife Paula and the family. Guys, great to see you all. Barry, I have to ask you, so many wonderful horses there, wonderful memories. How proud does it make you looking back on that, particularly the latter stages of your career when the kids were old enough to appreciate what you were doing? Uh, that's so true. It was great days all the way through over the years, but shut the front door in particular. Um, one of the Irish got national, um, Orla and she were both with us. Reen wasn't born at that stage, but uh, brilliant to have them there. They were there for Bob's at winning the Lexus. Um, they were there for a sprinter sacker winning in Punchestown. So they were magic days because I was very fortunate, I suppose, through the years, especially riding for Nicky, to have big success and great success in England. But I really long for, you know, success in home soil. And to have it here with Paula and the kids with us and enjoy those days and really embrace it was brilliant. So I had um, oh, some brilliant days. And a lot of people have described it as the end of an era because, first of all, AP McCoy retired, then, of course, Ruby, and now yourself. I mean, how do you feel about it looking back? Do you feel you were part of maybe a golden age for jump jockeys? I, yeah, I suppose so. Um, you know, Ruby, AP, Paul Carberry, Conor Dwyer, Charlie Swan, Davy Russell, brilliant jockeys. But I suppose every generation has, you know, their... their, their the quality of that time, be it John Frankham, Tommy Carberry's. So it was a great group of us and we got on brilliantly with great times, good camaraderie, good rivalry, but it was always healthy and it was it was great fun. I loved it right through. It was great fun from day one right to finish in Cheltenham. It was just, yeah, it was just brilliant to be able to enjoy it and embrace it all. And in fairness, you always gave that impression too. And Barry, to bear it like you did at Cheltenham this year, while... I know it wasn't necessarily the original plan. Looking back on it, though, in hindsight, was it pretty much the perfect way to send off after a wonderful week there? Uh, you couldn't ask for any better. Um, we discussed it here at home, myself and Paula. You know, we knew it was my last Cheltenham and, and where would we finish up and possibly Ferry House being my local track only just down the road and punch us down the end of the season. I wasn't wishing any of it away. I didn't want it to stop, say, overnight, but I knew this that season was the time to finish. But... Um, on reflection and how we'll always reflect on it over the years to sign off on the on the five winners in Cheltenham, I don't think I could improve on it by much. Well, it truly was a wonderful career. And Barry, it's a great pleasure to see you presented with your award by your family here. Our willing accomplices there in the background, Irish Racing Hero for 2020. Merry Christmas to you all, the family. Thanks for being with us. Cheers, Gary. Thank you. Well, that's as good a place as any to draw a line under proceedings for this year. I hope you've enjoyed the show. It's been a far from conventional year for any of us, but the quality of the people and the horses in Irish racing endures. Happy Christmas to you all. Stay safe and we'll leave you with the HRI Awards winners for 2020.